welcome back to part two. Now, in true rock and roll tradition, our next guests have interrupted their UK tour to be with us, especially on the programme this evening. Welcome to Swades, Brett and Simon. Hello. Hello. So how's the tour going? Tell us. I mean, you're halfway through it at the moment. It's um, been really, yeah, really, really exciting, actually. Really exciting to be playing again, because we haven't played for such a long time now. Um, like some play, we played uh, in Wolverhampton the other night and we realised we hadn't played the Midlands for like a year and a half or something like that. So it's just really exciting and with the sort of set we're playing is just kind of like really just, you know, uh, just really kind of all the loud songs and stuff mm. like that, you know. So. Was it nerve wracking going out again or um, a mixture of nerves and excitement? Yeah, it's sort of excitement more than nerves really. You know, just looking forward to getting up back on the road again and stuff. And um, the fans are just more crazier than they were before. It's brilliant. Yeah. He had his uh, shoes stolen the other night. That was about. Yeah. Exciting. We have quite a few. It's kind of got, it's quite it gets quite physical. Lots of the shows, but they're great. It's all kind of in the best possible um, taste. taste. Yeah. When you say physical, what do you mean by physical, Brett? Um, what being punched, being groped? Well, I've got a lot of bruises up and down my arms. Actually, I've got, well, you can't really see them too well here. Oh, there are a few on got, that yeah, side there, though. Yeah. Yeah, I've got scratches and stuff like that. But no, the crowd just get really, um, really into it and stuff. You know, it's been really good. Everything's been really, everyone's been really kind of un, uncynical and really sort of, really just up for it. Well, let's talk about the new album, Dog Man Star, if we can. First of all, I mean, how far, you know, as far as you guys are concerned, how does it compare with the first one? You know, kind of mood-wise, you know, lyrically. Um, I think it compares. I think it's a lot better. Definitely a lot better. If people like the first album, I think they'll like this one a lot more. If people didn't like the first album, I think it's a possibility they might like this one. Um, it's a lot more kind of inventive, and I think there's a lot, there's a lot more, um, there's a lot more contrast on it. I mean, there's songs that are kind of really, really garagey on it, really sort of, really stark and quite sort of punky on it, and there's things that are really lush and really ambitious. Let's talk about the burning thing, if we can, and you know, kind of get that out of the way. Um, I mean, how far back was that brewing? Um, about a year and a half, probably. Yeah, quite a long time, really. Um, so consequently, how did that affect the recording of the album? Um, it was recorded in quite sort of um, unusual circumstances in that while Bernard was in the band, he played his parts on the songs in a very separate way because things had broken down pretty much between the rest of the band and him. Um, he played his parts on the on the on the tracks and and left and um, we took them from there mm. and because because of, there had been sort of troubles brewing in the band and stuff like that until then it was the rest of the album was completed in a really kind of harmonious atmosphere which was great yeah it's important that not everything you do is is always really full of strife and full of pain because it makes for up sort of up music that's really uptight and I don't necessarily think music should always be too uptight really. mm. and we have made two quite um, intense albums in lots of ways but I don't want every bit of our music to always be like that. Let's go back to the album I mean in particular the um, single which I think you've sort of described as being the you know as far as you're concerned the Wild best ones. yeah yeah as being the best suede song so far yeah I why think do you feel that? Um, I don't know I, I think it's I don't know. It's the first so first single for me that we've that we've released that I've been completely a hundred percent loved. There's a lifeline slipping as the record plays. As I open the blinds of my mind, I'm believing that you can stay. Done sort of two sorts of songs, and one of the songs has been the kind of like, you know, the kind of bubble gum sort of like guitar songs, and the other songs have been the kind of like, you know, uh, wrist slashing kind of. Um, 
shelves, you know. And this kind of like it combines the two sentiments quite nicely. Yeah. Another couple of the songs are sort of written from the um, perspective of a house housewife, mm. um, the two of us, and, and still life, as Sleeping Pills was as well. Yeah. You know what sort of um, you know where do you kind of draw from when you're sort of writing from that perspective? Well, people your mother. Say, yes, pretty much. And my mum was a housewife, and uh, and lots of the ways in which. I felt quite a lot of, um, I felt quite a lot for her because I think like, housewives are one of those sorts of sectors of the community which um, don't get um, any breaks really. They're kind of like you know people just sort of think that they're sort of part of a cosy family so they've got everything, but they're quite they're quite tragic people. But it was really more I said, when I say housewife, it's really more like yourself being a situ the kind of situation that a housewife is in, anyone that's trapped or anything like that, mm. you know, and parts of my life I felt trapped and, and so it comes out, in, comes out in the songs. Mm. But well, I come from suburbia, so it's, it's just there, it's like, it's like you know, sort of an, an analysis of your brain goes back to your childhood, I was, comes up, come from the suburbs, so I, I just can't really get away from it, no matter mm. how much I try, it's like, it's always chained to me somehow, you know, I couldn't, I just can't free myself of it, so it's... It's a shame, isn't it? <laughs> Keep writing the same song over and over. Still changed to the kitchen, kitchen sink. Ninety-four Baker Street was where the Beatles opened the first in a planned series of shops that were going to spread right across the country, selling clothes and assorted knickknacks. Now, upon its opening, a giant psychedelic mural covered the whole of the building, much to the disdain of local residents and shopkeepers. In fact, the local council made them cover it up a little after. Not one of the Fab's more successful ventures, it closed down seven months later after a two-day closing down sale, where everything was given away absolutely free. That's my kind of closing down sale. Now coming up next on the beat, we've got the Kitchens of Distinction, live at Reading 94, with one of the standout cuts from their new album, Get Over Yourself.